Hello and welcome to Trusty Hogs. I'm Helen Bauer. And I'm Catherine Bellhart. And if you're new to our podcast, then we should explain that here at Trusty Hogs, Helen and I tell you, frankly, too many of our secrets. Yes. And then we get a famous comedian to join us to help solve all of your problems, all of our listener problems. Yes, every new episode is out on Thursday. And if you are a new patron supporter, then you get it 24 hours early on a Wednesday, as well as an extra episode every Friday. Yes, and to be clear, if you think we tell you too much in these main episodes, let us assure you the extra episodes are where we truly overshare. Welcome to episode... 89. It's 89. Hello and welcome. The year is 1989. And today's episode is (laughs) number 89. Okay, just one of those things are true and that's fine. Margaret Thatcher's in the height of power, is she? Or are we on to John Major? Oh, she's in her decline. Oh, Major's next year. Margaret Thatcher is in her decline. And John Major is about to take over I'm as so the stressed next right Prime now. Minister You're of Britain. You're incorrect. He's eating a flapjack. Can we please have some goddamn professionals? That's not a flapjack. That's Sorry. a rip-off of a flapjack. Hello and welcome, welcome to, to episode Hall. You're <laughs> Helen Bauer. I'm Catherine Bellhart. And this is our podcast where we talk about our lovely lives. Yeah. And we do answer your listener problems. Yes. And goodness me, what a week it's been. I have so much to tell you. Through the fog, step forth the trusty hogs. Yeah, you're gonna give them your problems and they will solve them Or maybe they won't and that's your problem They'll have guests and Andrew White on the tech Oh, it's Helen and Catherine as the trusty hogs Trust the trusty hogs or maybe not First of all, last night I did something that you usually do I am... Not upset with you, but it's, it's just... It's weird, right? It's, it's, sometimes it feels like your personality is evolving, and I love that for you, but it just... it. I, <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's no, like me I, being like, oh my God, why? I spent last can night I deep cleaning my bathroom. What? Have you heard of Scrub Daddy? Like, you'd oh be upset. Oh my God, I'd love that. <laughs> no, I did go to a musical, but I'll explain why I went to the musical. Because of your girlfriend? Well, my girlfriend's going to perform at the next... Um, She's in the next show at the Regent's Park <laughs> so Open Air Theatre. Yeah, the Robin Hood show. Uh, go see it, by the way. I'm really really excited to and I'll probably be there most evenings so please wave if you see me <laughs> she'd love if she was on stage and I was getting waves <laughs> I'm sure of it I'm coming with you one night am I yes, do please. I have the date for that yet we probably should do personal yeah. admin off the podcast okay yeah yes. apologies Something to the to listener yeah 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 sorry but look, women not allowed to organise their lives in 20, 1989 I hate you okay <laughs> okay so um, but we're we, working girls but so we went to see the I don't think you know what that means we went to see the show <laughs> la- that's on now which is once on this island. Yeah. And it was great. I really thought like, because the place wasn't full and I felt like they gave it socks. Like to perform to a half, it was a Monday. Yeah, it's tough. So, yeah, I felt like they really gave it socks and we, I really enjoyed it and I, I didn't know what it was about or, listen, I mean, would I prefer they said things that they could sing? Sure, but like, <gasps> I will also say that some of them had amazing voices, like astounding voices. So, what was what was the storyline of it? I think, I could be wrong, but is it a retelling of Little Mermaid? <gasps> uh, no, no. It, it's oh. a it is a Broadway original musical. It was a Why did it not know it's an actual Haitian legend? I believe so, yeah. Okay, we couldn't figure out if it was based on the original Mer- but basically it is about how a girl, an orphan who was found in a tree Annie and raised no Jacqueline Wilson. Oh, I'm no. so sorry. Maybe? I'm so sorry, you are right. Okay, so it, it is, is based Little on Little Mermaid. There is, yeah. <laughs> Okay, great. I'll just cut that out, me being wrong. No, no, no don't you dare. Don't you dare. Don't you dare. You're wrong. Right. Raising I society. guess I know more about musicals than <laughs> Andrew now. It's actually a Broadway original. Wow. I never knew Is that. I never fun? knew that. Wow. Fucking trick piece of shit. Wow. You leave it in. Okay. You leave it in and you Sorry, be Andrew. wrong. Andrew. Enjoy it's your alert. flapjack. It's a teachable that doesn't moment. count as a flapjack. Anyway, so yeah, it was like she's found in a tree. She's raised by these people and the Haitian community are very split between like incredibly wealthy elites and then everybody else who okay. lives in quite a lot of poverty. Oh. She's raised in poverty and then poor social mobility and Helen's then a man crashes corner. his car and car. he's from his car and it's from this nobility and they meet and she nurses him back nurses him back to health and then she goes and follows him back to his his part of the world I suppose. And yeah. um and they fall in love but he treats her quite badly. Oh, no. And then ultimately he marries the woman he was always betrothed to. Spoiler. <gasps> and then what happens to but the tree there's girl? A, but there's a simultaneous storyline, which is that like the only reason they were managed to get together is because she negotiated with the gods, the four <gasps> gods of ha- of Haiti. 
And so there's a trade off to be made where she has to choose his life or love. Or no, she trades her life for his in the name of love. And it's a very interesting story. Oh, it's a proper musical tragedy. Yeah, it's exquisite. I love a tragic musical. Yeah, it's real good. And also the guy who plays the god of death has the most like incredible <sighs> evil laugh. Like one of those like, <laughs> but yes. like really good. I, that's, I didn't do it service. And I wish like I, Jeremy I, Irons scar level. Yes, like yes. I wish I hadn't tried because it was no le- nowhere near the level. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like goes on for so long. That was very good. Very nice. Okay. But that was more like Christine Brinsky. And I'm, th- I'm talking <laughs> like. Close. Okay. Well. One let's, more, one more. All right. You're doing an impression of something you haven't even heard. Ha! 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 Yeah, closer. Yeah. yeah, no, yeah. And listen, check it out. It's so, it's so good. So I really enjoyed it, and um, and it made me like I was watching it beside Elle and being like, oh my god, I can't believe we have to do a show here. Like this is so scary. And it's well, um, we saw Legally Blonde. It's got so many good yeah, memories. Yeah, I was like, oh my god. Like she was like, I just want to go scope it out, and I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, like I chill. Oh my god! Um, but it's such an amazing place to go see a show. Like the way you can get food and drinks, and it's outdoors. I will tell you what, yeah. I did forget though. If you are gonna go, and I hope you do, I love um, that Catherine's so new to musical theatre that she's telling us about how good the Regent's Park Open Air Theatre is. It's like, bitch. Please, I was actually like, gonna tell everyone to bring a little blanket because Granny Bohart was a little bit cold. Oh, can I also recommend RE Regent's Park Open Air Theatre? Sun cream. Yeah. Sun cream, yes. I, I got, uh, and you got real burnt. Yeah, I went to see a matinee of Legally Bond and got the I remember campus this. You case were of sunburn red. ever. <laughs> yeah, it was bad. Come prepared um, for all weathers. But also, if you are under 25, you can get a Breeze membership. Oh um, God, yeah. Which is a one-off £10 fee, yeah. and it get, you can buy two £10 tickets for every production um, until your 26th birthday. Isn't that amazing? And, and if it's anyone's wondering, unrelatable? that is Andrew. Yeah, <laughs> Andrew's story doesn't really relate to us, but I do think you should do it. And also, if you're not sold, so there's like, there's a way to get cheap tickets. It's a gorgeous night out. We're telling you that you should go to see the specifically go see the Robin Hood show. And if go you see her girlfriend, I was gonna go say, see her girlfriend. I was going to say, guess how many lesbians are in this cast? 10? 13. There's more lesbians in this crew and cast than there are people. <laughs> the collective... Um, oh, they came up with Like something. a murder of... Like, or like no, it's a, not a, a murder, murder of or, prose. They came up with something, but I can't remember what... Uh, it's a, a dungaree pocket. A dungaree of lesbians? A dungaree. A kitten of lesbians? No, because kittens are already... They've already got like their thing. Um, a... A... Uh, um, sensible shoe of lesbians? A Doc Martens? A Doc Martens. A... Um, uh, Maybe a shop, like a shop name would be good. Like, where do you guys shop? <laughs> where do you guys like shop? Listen, go see the musical. Don't worry about it. We move on. My God. A boot. Constant a homophobia boots with this girl. Yeah, a oh. boot? Sorry. Boots. 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 boots is for straight women. As in the chemist boots. Yeah. That's for straight women. And no. for like the morning no, after. No, it's for pill. everyone. <laughs> but it's, it's for everyone. It's where you Sorry, looking right down the lens here on Pride oh, Month. Sorry, one second. Everyone is welcome. In boots. Okay. Um, well, the other thing... Not so while I'm in there, I'm though. sorry to say it. By the, way, <laughs> by the way, I'm so self-conscious now that... Because remember when at the live show, people did that bingo card? Loved it. So people did a bingo card of all the things that we do very often on the podcast. And consequently, I'm so conscious that I'm now about to fall into every single trope. So I've already talked about my girlfriend. Okay, if you mention Pilates, I swear to fucking God. No, I was actually going to mention something else, which is that... The gym. No, can I finish? It's that your fucking name is Helen. My girlfriend's name is Ellen. Guess what I keep doing? Saying Helen in bed. No, not in oh, bed. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Oh wait, I actually think I know what this is. Gonna, I'm just a guest. You know when you're like so used to being annoyed at one person that when you're annoyed at the other person, That's you exactly go Helen. <laughs> I used to do that with every single person in my life with my brother's name. As soon as I like left the family home, any guy that would annoy me even slightly, I'd be like, Ted! So whenever you get annoyed, I'm assuming you're just like, shut up. No, I don't tell her to shut up because that's something I reserve for you in this professional context. Um, but I do, I like whenever I am saying her name in an agitated tone, like, El- what should be like Ellen it always comes out Helen. <laughs> but can she like can she hear the difference? Yes, Damn she it. really can. <laughs> she re- she's like, is this about me or is this about you? And also, when I'm talking about planning things with either of you, yeah, I will say the other name, and it's a nightmare. So your nightmare. Also, I was more ha- more often lately. What's been happening is when I'm telling a story about Ellen, I will re- refer to her as Helen. Oh yes, which is. 
horrible. You both obviously feel horrible. Like yeah, it's a nightmare to keep describing stories about my girlfriend and then using. No, this means that again. everyone's gonna think I'm a successful actor. Are you kidding? This is great for me. That's a really kind, and I think more the problem is that people think that I'm in love with you secretly. Oh, baby, we both have a little bit of thing for each other. That's Don't we definitely do? We <laughs> definitely do. <laughs> Like, do you know what I mean? Like, I wanted to be like, no. And then I remembered how in the green room the other night I you came touch in, I was me, like, you see things. Oh, yeah. But also, you were wearing that delicious honeysuckle Joe Malone perfume. Oh Fuck my god! Me. I was literally lying on a couch just a couple of nights ago. Catherine arrived, and I was like, "Look, this is one of those couches where I physically cannot get up from. Like, <laughs> you have to join me with the couch, or like just so not I see me at all." She so lay nice. straight on top of me, went straight into the nape, and you went, "You smell gorgeous." You smell so honeysuckle good. You Joe Malone. So Oh, good. Oh, I I'm a Joe Malone girly. Joe Malone. It just always feels so like extravagant. I feel like I've messed up because apparently, if you buy a bottle of Joe Malone in the Joe Malone shop, they will engrave it. What? For you, they will like customize it. Well, that's posh. How freaking fancy that's is so that? That's posh. That's really fancy. Um, I spent sixty pounds yesterday in Lush. I can't Every go time into a Lush anymore. Every you tell me about your financial choices, I get terrified, so anxious. Yeah, and it's I been an, a big weekend of it. Because I decided I was a gardener. Oh, God. And, um, which I think is good for me. You stress me out so much. So I've got some flowers. Joe, be fun to garden in. What? Your own home at some point. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Saving up for a deposit, obviously. No. Will you stop saying that sarcastically? It's something you should try. I know, I know. I think everyone should try it. But, like, the reality is that there's <laughs> just so much good things to live in your life now, you know? Yeah. Um. We don't know how long we've got left on this crazy planet we call Earth. Oh my God. You know what's so annoying? <laughs> on this mad old planet You are going to end up living in my fucking Earth. shed and I'm going to have to be like, I told you to save. And you're going to be like, I like it here. I think that's part of the problem is I know I've got so many safety nets of friends. Like, there's Count no way you're going to let sweet No, Count you would... Out. If Can I was out. cold on the street, even if I was like, no, I'm all right out here, you, you would mother you me to hot. death. You, you would, I do hot. run warm. If you were cold and naked on the street, I just assume you'd sleep walk again. <laughs> <laughs> she has a hotel Andrew, room too. Very I nice, am Andrew. Still very nice. I'm working through there some is. things about the sleepwalking incident. That was just not some. Cold. You're not still working through the whole freaking thing. No, I genuinely think I'm thriving. But, okay. Right. Kate, I just don't think it's possible to go into Lush and not drop that sort of money. I disagree. Because my brother bought me the Mario bath bomb. Have you seen There's it? It's Mario so good. Lush, Lush the shop has done a crossover. Everyone knows you mean Lush the shop. Just think there's international listeners. Like, happens if you're listening in Haiti. Like, do you know what Lush is? Do you have Lush? I don't know. I've never been. We've got some Russian listeners in Russia. Oh, well. Sorry, is it somebody, somebody commented <laughs> that recently? Just How do you reminded. say Hello. <laughs> I know this. I really thought you were going to be like, support Ukraine. <laughs> oh, support Ukraine. And um, uh, how do I say hello in Russian? How have I forgotten this? Um, I never knew. Borodar. I never knew. Borodar. What does that mean? <laughs> it is um, uh, Privet. 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 Hi. Huh. That's nice. And uh, a dos for Dania. I'm kind of excited that we have, I hope we have homosexual Russian listeners. That'd be exciting. Don't nod you're if okay. you're listening to this. Like, yeah, yeah, don't. Oh my God. Oh my God, you're fine. Do Everything's not fine. nod Shh. on the street. Um, do you just think I'm wild? You're so insensitive. I just remembered <laughs> we about... Were, we just, you just, what you just heard was us losing all of our Russian listeners. And for that, we're sorry. We're sorry. I When I went to <laughs> Russia, when I went to Russia, I was reminded of this Russia? recently. I was in an You're advert so in Russia. Traveled. I what? was in an advert in Russia when I was 21. Because I didn't... Because... <laughs> What? This literally came out so randomly. So I was with, when when I was in Australia. Oh, sweet Jesus. We saw my friend Alice. And Alice had been telling someone about being like, oh, Helen, how do I... I can't talk about the gym, but you can talk about Australia every five seconds. <laughs> but then um, Alice told someone, she's like, oh, how do you know Helen Richard? Though We're like, oh, we met at college. And then like, we of us went to uni. So we sort of like, we did a bit of traveling together. And they were like, where do you go? And we were like, Russia. Because <laughs> I organized us to go to Russia, just me and her. We went to an office. We were like 21. Went to an office in London and got did visas Did you pretend done. to be Princess Anastasia? Because mm. oh, that uh, feels like you. Duh, duh. Yeah. Um, and then um, went to Moscow, but I thought we would just do it on vibes. And it's really hard, you like country, you would do Moscow to Moscow on well, vibes. Well, we got the visa, and then I thought we'd vibe from there. And Andrew and really I looked at each other like, no homosexual has ever vibed out in Russia. Yeah, well, 
not homosexual. So I guess it was different for me. Yeah. So I arrived there. We go to a hostel. Weird and brag. then I <laughs> cannot, Really fucking weird brag. <laughs> could not get around anywhere. It was so hard to figure out how the city worked. Then went to the main train station, which is like, they're called the wrong name. So like in Moscow, the train station is called St. Petersburg. And you go to Moscow station in St. Petersburg. So you your ticket looks like it's the wrong way. It's all very, oh, cool. like, everything's like, confusing. That is confusing. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's all like just tricky. And um, then, so I managed to get us train tickets to go on a train overnight from Moscow to St. Petersburg. I mean, we're on that. Like, we, we don't speak. I mean, I learned a bit of Russian before we went. Alice, nothing. You have such an unbelievable ability I was to like, learn languages. Dva billet, uh, is it Pajalsto or Prussia? I can't remember if it's Polish or Russian. You're so good at learning languages. Spasiba. Spasiba. That's okay. thank you in Russian. Wow, nice. Okay. <laughs> uh, spasiba. And, uh, and then we got there and I was like, oh, we need to find a hostel or somewhere to sleep tonight, which you need to book in advance, I think, in, in Russia. They don't like people just or random. Or most countries, but go on. No, because I vibed out India for three months when I was 18. That like, you can vibe. So you have to like leave a cult on the run overnight? <laughs> yes, yes, okay. for the very wealthy German woman. Yeah, not really. And once again, Dankeschön to the woman who took me to a five-star resort and gave me $100 and all I had to do was show a bed with her and I appreciate you <laughs> no. I had to get out of the call I was stuck in a in a, an ashram it was very frightening okay you're like I was 18 I was a child so stressed okay, so then go on. we go to this um so then sorry <laughs> your attempt at de-stressing like oh I know that sounds bad but you have to remember I was only 18 in this <laughs> I was situation only little, I didn't know what I was doing you just go along with me <laughs> And then we, so then we go to a McDonald's when we get in the train station. And I go on the Wi-Fi and I managed to like book us a hostel for that evening, uh -huh. like like just like one with like loads of dorms and stuff like that. That was be great. So we walked there and knocked on the door. Like no one answered. And like rung the door, but no one answered. So I called the number on the thing and I was like, oh hi, like um it's Helen and Alice. We're staying at the hostel tonight. And they went, no, you're not. We're not open yet. And I was like, oh we've we've booked it. We've booked it. We've got a reservation. And they came down, they were like, we're literally not opening until the weekend. And we were like, oh my God, this is so embarrassing. Like, can you do anything to help us? Like, we didn't pay anything, we just made a reservation. And they were like, are you English? And we were like, yeah. And they were like, we're literally opening up in like five days time. You can stay here for free. And like, well, you can finish us helping putting stuff up and you've got to film an English advert for a hostel. And we were like, no fucking way. done. And it, then it went on to win like the best hostel awards for years and years and years. It's cool. And I was Googling it furiously because I mean, I was trying to find our, out, our advert we did. It's called Soul Kitchen Hostel St. Petersburg. It's incredible. We had the whole place to ourselves. It was gorgeous. They took us out party in St. Petersburg. They like made, like it was insane. How did insane. you look at it? That's the look of that. Is and, so but the advert, like we had have to find it because it has question? to be so cringe question? yeah go on question when you do find it can we see it okay couldn't find it olga even tried to look for it because olga's super good at finding third stuff on the question, internet uh, but if anyone question. can please let me know were you wearing clothes i was wearing the, i remember wearing the lowest cut you don't so need to hold down your top we <laughs> get what low cut means jesus and, christ and um in it me and alice definitely i remember this so clearly Did you guys make out it was the oh, probably um and we, we definitely parodied what was a popular Halifax advert at the time. <laughs> <laughs> Not even like Premier Inn. Halifax. We were like on the balcony overlooking the river that goes up to, you know, the Hermitage, the big the big palace, that gorgeous, like very famous oh. blue palace in Russia. It's insane. We were just up the river from there. And we were singing like, like in 21 or whatever with like our Vogue cigarettes. No. Going like, extra, extra. It I know you want more. We'll give you something extra when you want. <laughs> Oh my god! That makes it's me feel so physically bad. sick. Oh my god! Please, but we had the best time. If we have any internet <laughs> deep divers on the podcast or who listen, please, please find it. Please let us know, Russian listeners. Please let us know. That's I went on so the Soul funny. Kitchen Hostel YouTube page, and I think it used to be on there, but it's not there anymore. That is absolutely Couldn't see it on their Facebook, so they may have taken it down. Did you pay your? But if the Russian the listeners wife? could get in contact with them. <laughs> I mean, that actually, can, if someone incredible. does find it, can you just check through it and just make sure that I am clothed the entire time? Please. And looks actually 18. So hey, actually, Helen. what I meant to say is go to Russia, just go off vibes. You never know what could happen. Yeah. <laughs> Unless it's not safe to do so. 
Well, in which case, uh, don't. <laughs> hey, guys. Are you ready for a guest? I'm so excited. I love this guest. Are you? Me too. Because oh, really usually even. I hate our guests. Yeah, no, same. <laughs> 87 out of 88. I've hated everything now. Oh. <laughs> that would be so good. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Please welcome to Trusty Hogs. Tom's and Kelly. Kelly. Ha, 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 ha. Why are you like this? It's it's Helen Bauer interrupting, uh, realistically, myself. Um, I'm so excited because I am going on my second ever tour with my new show, Grand Supreme Darling Princess. I'm going all over the UK and a bit of Ireland and a bit of Europe. So please come and see me. All the dates are on my website. I'm going to Oxford. I'm going to Poole. I'm going to Paris. I'm going to Cork. I'm going to Dublin. I'm going to Belfast. I'm going to Edinburgh. I'm going to Glasgow. I'm going to Aldershot. So please come and join me if I'm in a town near you. Can't wait to see you soon. Bye. I'm not Five sure, for eight, girl. Let's start no, I'm sorry. Can I say we one are more thing? Okay, now. welcome, Towns and Kelly. Yay! <laughs> right, five eight thing. is tall for five a girl. Five eight is not tall. Yes, it's it is not for a girl. tall. I'm I tell you, Catherine. Five five. She's a Come many, on. You can't many baby. Us together. Yeah, but she's yeah. got like um, the malnutrition from years of colonialism, so I don't even want to get involved in that sort of shortness. You get involved in it all the time when you want to okay, make jokes sorry. about it. Okay, sorry. I'm sorry, Towns and say sorry. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, here's the thing. I believe neither of you. <laughs> I I do consider myself a feminist. Do you? Sometimes. I'm surprised to find that. There's a couple of things that I think as women we've just got really wrong. Like, you know, I'm like still pissed off about the fact that we got so close to equal pay and then mm. we got distracted by free the nipple, which yeah. just felt like... I'm not happy that dick pics are gone. <laughs> just send them over. I don't mind. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Please don't get that on our podcast. You're going to get some unfortunate dick. You know, I still uh, never received a dick Honestly, pic. I've got time for it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I haven't great. got a lot going on. No right. shade to our hogs, but don't send your dick to Tamlin. Please send me a dick. Oh, for God's Send sake. every dick to Tamlin. <laughs> Andrew, do one now. Andrew, do one I now. Do them. one now. I don't, I don't I've already them. got it. I've already got it. <laughs> he airdropped. <laughs> right. Here's my problem oh, with women who are five foot eight referring to themselves as tall. She wow. is tall. She, okay. Can I speak my truth though? May I? As if you've ever been stopped. Because you must. How are we going to stop you? You must see <laughs> with some, your height. In that. Yeah, I'll physically destroy yeah. the pair mm-hmm. of you. So there's this there's this wave happening at the moment where brides are all trying to be like you know, different and unique, and the way they're doing that is by. Why are you so on top of bridal trends? <laughs> You're not even <laughs> in a relationship. Honestly, it sounds like this really. We've just got onto this, but it does sound like a you problem. <laughs> like yeah, really. I, thank you. It's thank like, you. It's Who's this on top of bridal stuff? When, like she has a not whole allowed bit of... tools. Not allowed brides. <laughs> what? Else? Yeah, what other women no, are. What? It's brides who are trying to be quirky and different. And I, I, I do not approve of high heels full stop. I think they're uncomfy and I don't want to wear them. Here's my problem. When women of five foot eight and below are trying to be like different and quirky and have their bridesmaids wearing Converse, I look like a fucking freak. Whereas the times before when I'd be the tall bridesmaid in my flats and comfy and everyone else wearing heels, I look like one of the girls. Now everyone's wearing flats. They come down the aisle and it's like, here comes Helen. They're just going along the pews. I need you to hear out your logic. You think you're a feminist. You're anti-heels because they're uncomfy. Yes. But but you think every woman who isn't to you should wear heels and yes. be uncomfortable. If they're so under that, five eight. So is that you seem more diminutive, but you're a feminist. Is that your logic? Yeah. Mm. Okay. Thompson, how the hell are you today, babe? Yeah. Hey, it's hey. nice. Um, just to uh, put my heels back on. I don't, yeah, don't mind if you do. What if I said I, I, I loved how you said five foot eight and below there. Well, maybe I'm five foot nine. Oh, five foot nine and above. You're welcome. You can okay. shop in my area. I'm, I like you. You can shop in my area. Five eight is tall. <laughs> you're wild. Hey, I have a question because before we started talking, you said mm. that pre-comedy, you used to be a drag king. I did do drag king. I didn't know this about you. Yeah, I did. I oh did my God. character comedy, then I did drag king stuff. And uh, on, honestly, it's great and the only reason I stopped was I couldn't be bothered to carry costume around with me anymore and all, ev- all the other drag kings were like so immaculate and I was just sort of like putting some eyeshadow on my upper lip <laughs> by the end <laughs> like I'll do it it's about the essence she you know she go down on a chimney sweep? what's happening that's wild Wait, eyeshadow 
Well, just whatever was knocking around in yeah. my bag. I'm just not, you have to be quite organized, it turns out, to be a drag king. Yeah. And Wait a I'm second. Well, of course, of course. Of course, women invented a man who has to be incredibly yeah. organized. <laughs> yeah. But wait, what was your drag king name? He was called Ben Dovery. <gasps> um, J'adore. Yeah, which, uh, which <laughs> what really irked me about that was like a guy I was seeing at the time came up with it and I was like, shut up. And then I was like, oh no, that is quite good actually. <laughs> and then I jumped him, face, never I spoke to him ever again and just took the name. But it always like every time someone's like, oh, that's a good name. I do get a little like stab in the gut of like, I didn't come up with it. <laughs> My stage name is an ex-girlfriend's grandmother's name. Yeah. What? Yeah. An ex-girlfriend's mm. grandmother's name. All variations of my name and my mother's name and every maiden name it was all gone. Mm -hmm. And you need an individual name on, a unique name yes, on Spotlight. On, yeah. My girlfriend at the time was like, well, my grandmother has this cool surname and I was like, I'll take it. And then we did break up fairly yeah. soon after and I get the sense she wished she hadn't. <laughs> I remember when I found me, that which out. Makes sense. Oh, well, how do you feel about that now? Oh, it's, I stress when people ask stress. me where it's from. Like when I'm, it always happens that a new girlfriend's, like friends will find out it's not my real name and they'll be like, where is it from? And you're like, um, don't worry about it. Don't even worry about it. Just found it under a piece of paper under like, a bush. Yeah, I guess, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. It's just like my, uh, don't, I just, a workshop. You guys <laughs> totally go forward in life lying about this. Honestly, no. I think oh, you need to create yeah. a new story. I need to create okay. a story. Like, bend over, uh, bend over E. Yeah. Like, you you were just like, you were walking down the street, you bent over and you felt an ovary pop out of your pocket. Yeah. Like a plastic one you were carrying with you for like, um because you were teaching PSHE. And that's how you came up with it. <laughs> And that's just your story, right? I love how I've got that vibe. Like, yeah, obviously I was teaching PhD. You're wearing your glasses on a chain, of course. You have that vibe. <laughs> Come on. She teaches, but it's not like a real subject. Yeah, but I'm like a cool teacher. Yeah. yeah. You'd be a great PhD. PhD. Yeah, PhD. Thanks, teacher, yeah. Tamsin. Just, just dropping ovaries everywhere I go. Yeah. yeah. That'd, be so so fun. Fun. Okay. That'd be so fun. Catherine would be a really intense geography teacher that had oh, everyone yeah. in the class I strongly disagree. I think I'd be an you. English teacher. And a history teacher. English and history. Uh -huh. No geography. I really got. I thought geography really. If I, I was going to no, well. teach a science, I would teach a real one. <gasps> oh. I said what I said. Oh. I said what I said. I teach drama. Would you? I thought you. Should, I could oh, see you on. as PA. <laughs> Is that because you're picturing yeah. Miss Trunchbull? <laughs> that's because that's, that's how it feels. Did she teach PE? I thought Miss Trunchbull taught PE. I thought she was just into sport. She was the headmistress, <laughs> but she, she was, was the physical she ed a, teacher as well. Yeah, yeah she was a previous discus champion. No, I was thinking yeah. of like my my PE teachers at school. I could just and I just think you'd be good, good. We were actually a sports academy, mm. Helen. Before Wait, you the PE upset. teachers in Cornwall are all six foot one with massive wabs. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. So they all play rugby. They're all play, they're crushing it. Yeah. What was your sport in your sports academy? My sport, I, I was actually sports captain in year seven. Uh, year seven doesn't count. Do you just think that's a brag yeah. here? Because look at where you are. No one's impressed by being sports <laughs> captain here. In year seven. Uh, which was before like our personalities had <laughs> developed. So I never got it again. But I played hockey. I was centre forward in Wait hockey. a second. Hang on. I'm just going to, can I just check in? I'm not trying to out anybody, but. Oh, You'll dear. have to answer this question, but drag, drag king, king hockey. hockey. Please tell me you're at least bisexual. Uh, yeah, I mean, definitely not completely straight. Okay, obviously. thank God. Thank God. Because you understand that your nails, because you show your nails to the camera, are confusing. Whoa. Okay, they're long Power acrylics bear. for anyone who's just listening, and they're gorgeous. So does that mean that you couldn't be with a woman tonight? No, you can, of course. Okay, so what's just there are it, other ways? But there are other ways, but it wouldn't. I wouldn't be like jumping for penetration with those. Right. Some mouth stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. I get it, I get it. <laughs> Sorry, did you just I feel like we're in the staff the room. <laughs> like yeah, you just patted down on the shoulder like, yeah, I've met a lesbian before, yeah. I understand and I approve of what you gals do. Enjoy yourselves, oh enjoy yourselves. I, so, I feel so accepted. <laughs> what is wrong well, with you? Well, the PE teacher accepts you, that's pretty high praise. Right? I'm trying to not be too much of an ally at the moment. Okay. Because well, I, I think that, that came out that's wrong. That's so brave of you. It's Pride Month, Helen. <laughs> I know. <laughs> that's the There's reason. too much of it around right now. That's, yeah. But, so have Balance. all of your algorithms gone like Pride crazy and like all of the adverts you get are like Pride related, yeah. right? No. Mine are. Mine are. So Mine then, are entirely Pilates focused. Oh, you're really mm, in a phase, aren't you? I really am. I really like, am. We can't convert anymore. Like, yeah, they, they, she gets it. They There's know, yeah. so many videos of allies taking it too far and being too annoying. 
And I was mm-hmm. like, right, so I just need to like, so I took the rainbows out of everything I own. How did you do? <laughs> <laughs> I had I had um, three rainbows in my Instagram and Twitter bio, <laughs> Take them and I d- and then they weren't for like um, they weren't to try and indicate that I was they gay. Were NHS rainbows, but I was like, oh, other people saying? are using it for that, and I look like I'm appropriating the culture. So I was like, I'll just use hearts. So. What you cha- you swapped them out for pride. You were like, no. I don't yeah, because someone said it was like appropriation. Of like trying to be like, I'm, I'm part Andrew, of the community. Andrew, do you want to take this or should I? I'm tired. I'm so tired. Because people are making videos being like, these damn allies. And I don't want to be a damn ally. I want to be an ally. You know? Sweet like, Jesus. I get you girls. You do whatever you want. But also like. Can you stop touching Tamsin's shoulders? <laughs> like, please, God. Every time you get nervous about the gays. I'm like, becoming like more and more bi as the show goes on. <laughs> <laughs> and that's good allyship, right? It is actually. Like, you've got a point. I'm really good. She's making you. me feel straighter, I'll she's, be honest. She's giving really? me the rainbows from her pro- bio, and I'm going to put them in mine. I think you should put that the rainbows in your bio. Yeah. Um, Andrew, what did I do wrong now? Uh, you can show the pride flag as a support for, for pride and for LGBT people yes. without identifying as LGBT yourself. But then how do I do it and not have people think that I'm trying to sort of like jump on a bandwagon instead of just being like supportive? I guess it's whether or not you think Pride is a bandwagon. I don't think it's a bandwagon. Great, then you're fine. Just leave I had them. I, they weren't there for Pride Month. They were just, they've just been there for like two years. Just in, because I, I like rainbows. Uh, I like, <laughs> no, then, then no, then no. You can't <laughs> have them just because you like rainbows. Sorry, pick a side. NHS or us? Um, oh the my God. The natural enemies. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, are the gays in the NHS and five? No. All right. Okay. <laughs> Come on, where do you think male nurses come from? Get a grip. We should start that now, though. That, like that is a thing. A little turf war. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, there is a turf war that's more serious at the minute. Actually, it can't be that. Okay, we'll um, get to it. I'll I'll change um it back. By the time you're listening to this, you'll go onto my um Twitter bio, and it'll be like just rainbows, <laughs> and then just my bra size as well, because that's the only other thing I put down there. Okay, well. I love how you're more worried about, more than the opinion of anyone in this room, you're more worried about someone who might might stumble upon your Twitter bio and be like, oh, she's one of them bandwagoners. She's Always. I genuinely think I fear the unknown more than people who are right in front of me. You know, it's more likely that people would think you were gay than that you were like on a pride bandwagon. Yeah, but everyone already thinks I'm gay because I think you tell people I'm gay. No one thinks you're gay. No. You're the straightest Literally woman who's no. ever existed. Milo McCabe, Troy Hawk, he thought thinks I was gay. He thought, was he in character when he said <laughs> that? <laughs> he spent five days with me, me and my friend Francis, on like a comedy trip. Well, and at the end second, of it, when went, Francis, tell us about how you and Francis met again. And then apparently once we left, he said to the whole group, like, aren't they a lovely couple? And everyone was like, I don't think they're a couple. I think they're just very tactile with each other. <laughs> okay, well, first of all... <laughs> After five days. Five days. And he was convinced the entire time because me and Francis were just like hands everywhere, like plaiting each other's hair. That's of course what Milo McKay <laughs> thinks lesbians do. Of course he, we have to have him on to defend himself, but it's so funny that he thinks we plait each other's hair. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Like what else do those gals get up to? We were also, over the moon. Also quite funny that to be fair, if you bring a bisexual everywhere with you, yes. it's going to get confusing. Mm, and But also, you and Francis would be a gorgeous couple. Thank you so much. I ship that. I don't think my boyfriend Jack would think that. <laughs> well, bye, Jackie. Bye. <laughs> and I say, bye, Jackie. <laughs> <laughs> Tamsin, Sorry. you're doing an Edinburgh show. Yeah. What's it called? Um, it's called Tamsin Kelly, Crying in TK Maxx. <gasps> Yeah, we've all been there. The first time I saw that, I messaged you immediately. Because yeah. you know when you see a title yeah. of a show and you're like, I get it. I literally, I can see the show. I can feel the vibe. And I can also see the girlies that are coming. Can, yeah. I, tell you, <laughs> can I tell you about the last time I cried in TK Maxx? Please. Wait, do you actually have a story yeah. about it? Oh, obviously, Catherine. I do. Um, oh. It's obviously because I made a mistake. Were the candles out of order? No, but it is a candle related story. <laughs> I annoying. knew it. I knew okay, it. Okay, so every Christmas, TK Maxx gets a bigger, it seems to get bigger every year, version of one of my favorite Christmas candles called Forest Pine. It comes in a green glass jar. Do we know it? Yes. Of course you do. Okay, great. <laughs> you're with me. You're there. You're there. You're with me. Okay, fabulous. Thank, thank you for being there. Thank you for being there. Okay, so I'm there. I'm stood in front of it. I pick it up. And I'm already holding like approximately 17 pairs of trousers that I intend to try on. And <laughs> I do, none of which I will fit. And I'll stop at the fourth one and then be like, absolutely not. But the point is, okay, I was, was optimistic. Was one? No. no. Okay. I was going to get to a cry in the changing room. But before that, sadly, I picked up this giant forest pine and thought, yeah, I'll have a bit of that. 
and I did then immediately drop it. <gasps> and it smashed, obviously, into what felt like mm. a million pieces. Oh. Like truly a million pieces. But I, I, I okay, I want to stress, it was December. You know, you're already stressed about Christmas. Like every, the gigs are, mm. there's so many gigs in Chris, at Korean Christmas time. I was trying to buy, I, I like was already over shopped and I just was like, this is hell. Oh, this is hell. So I immediately start to weep. I, <laughs> I'm not proud of what I did next, which is quietly tiptoe with making a lot of crunches, obviously like crunch toe uh, towards the, sh- cause the candles and the shoes are in the same area. Dropped the 17 trousers just like in an aisle in the shoe section. Oh, and honestly, I just wept and walked out. I left it all. I didn't pay for the candle. I didn't try on the trousers. Didn't tell anyone. I didn't tell anyone. No one stopped me. I'm not sure if they saw and just noticed how much I was weeping and were like, we're going to let it slide. I feel awful about it. I haven't returned to the same TK Maxx. I feel so bad about it. You no, must send so your pictures like, up some behind 17 the year old's going to have to do that all of that. probably must happen all the time though. They probably have a code for it. So, oh, it's code seven, Christmas code seven, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Also, so I do feel like some 17 year olds had to deal with that and I've just f- walked out of there and I feel so bad about you it. You should because it's not like TK Maxx don't provide cleaning materials for everyone to use as I well. Know. Like I know. You're like, you're in the shoes, you're in the Christmas section. Like how close are you to the cleaning? Very close. There'll be so Very many close. different dustpan and brushes to use. It's unforgivable really what I did. I'm right, which one was it? Should we go in together? Should we march Catherine in together and be like, our daughter's got something to confess? It was Kilburn High Road two years ago and I feel so bad about it. I feel so bad. I honestly get the shivers every time I go past there oh. you know when you're like oh god I'm so sorry I I'm once so vomited sorry. in an aisle of Sainsbury's and Wait, didn't say that anything is way so I get worse. it what do you think that's worse <laughs> yeah it's Whoa, just a bit of um damn, then yeah I think it's worse no one's dying like happened to a child I'd ate some of that glass <laughs> <laughs> no fair fair I, I would rather see up the glass, yeah. I've had to clean vomit because I used to work in a cinema and it's so okay, hard to no, clean up. Right. No, that's... But on the aisle of a supermarket, mm. I think it's probably not. Also, it was mainly liquid. It was a liquidy one. And I always feel so, I always feel so really sorry for spreading. someone when they've been sick publicly. I just, yeah. I, I'm like, oh God, no, that's No, if somebody horrible. vomits amidst the food, that's a no from me. It was the um, yogurt <laughs> and dairy like, aisle. Yeah. It was the dairy yogurt aisle. Yogurt aisle, yeah, dairy oh. aisle. Okay, that is, that is the worst. What? Yeah. Every time I think I'm going to be, I'm going to tell a story where I send the words and then I remember I co host with Helen. <laughs> but well, so wait, is that, the, is that the sort of the theme thing you've of. Done? Uh, whatever. In a shop. Oh, in a shop. <laughs> um, Apart from like, stealing uh, I don't know. Yeah, I do like shop. I do like shop. Everyone shop. What? Yeah, I do, I do love a bit of stealing. Good for you from, from big organisations. Mostly Oliver Bonus because I just think, wow. <laughs> yeah. Go away. Yeah, you know? yeah fair enough. Um, uh, but why I cried, I just went into TK Maxx when I was re- actually, and it is a stressful shop. It's a very yeah. stressful And shop. I was stressed when I went in there and I looked around and I was actually like, oh God, this... Uh, shops a mess, but it's not as much of a mess as my life. No! 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 You can't get metaphorical in a TK Maxi moron. <laughs> no! No! Like, no RIP <laughs> label was going to change. Oh that. My God. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was bad. Yeah, I was just having a really rough time. I can only imagine how rough it would have to be for that to be, because like that place is a heart mess. Yeah, exactly. And also, out of all the shops on the British High Street to cry in. Well, I want like, to. Yeah. This is why it's such a specific cry, but like, mm. I would say, like. It's a chaos cry. I'd say a bookshop is a great place to cry. But that's so a moody quiet. cry. That's so a moody, quiet. somber cry. We're talking chaos cry. Yeah. I think that's what okay. TK Maxx okay. is. Like, then, can, yeah. You know, you can sort of disappear, can't yeah. you, into a TK Maxx? Yeah. Find what? a little nook. What nook yeah. did we go to? The blanket. Like Homer into the <gasps> bush? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, I think I was like. I was trying to buy a pair of tights as well, and I was like, "These are too expensive." <laughs> <laughs> they are expensive, and I just—they uh, always rip. Well, exactly, and I just expected more from TK Maxx. Yeah, you shouldn't be priced out of TK Maxx, right? That's a low point. Yeah, um, yeah, and I just uh, that just was like wondering, and was just like, yeah, I had a cry. I didn't even go in the change room or anything, and I just. Uh, just stood there. Yeah, and I just sort of threw the tights down. I don't even have the... Uh, I would never steal from that shop. That's just one of those shops I've got too much respect for. <laughs> That's like, nice. It's a really conflicting 
views about the shop. It's a mess, but I also respect it as a high street chain. Um, oh, yeah, Tom, that's really actually sweet. Well, I've yeah. changed. I've got this in the name of my show. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, wearing yeah. an orange dress in the poster. It's you a know, collaborator. Very, sure, sure, yeah, sure, sure. It's a really, yeah. it's a real tribute. An inspiration. It sounds like your muse, even. Yeah, yeah. It's been a real friend to me the past. Yeah, year. I, I get that. I really do. I mean, a friend where you're like, if my life's ever as bad as hers, I will die. But yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. yeah. It's well, the that's best. You'll have one of those friends. Exactly. Don't look at Helen when he's. <laughs> <laughs> you're like yeah I'm happy to be that <laughs> person for everyone I'll give this to TK Maxx yeah. it's a good shot to kill time in like you know when oh you're like God, yeah. gonna wait for a gig and like there's nothing to do and you're mm. just sort of like TK Maxx will well, fill yes. as much time as I need it to you yeah. can pick up a lot of things and put down a lot of things oh so yeah. many the candles alone you can just go smelling crazy yeah, and also because I'm not you know, a klutz I would never drop one <laughs> um I would never, I would never clutch to Catherine. It was a slippy pair of chairs who was leaning against, oh look, it was If she hell. did, I think she probably hell. tell someone. Did you tell someone when you were sick? Mm. Oh. No. I was, I was You're no better than so me. hungover and it was my first day at a new job at a cafe in Ballum I used to work at. It was my first day there and I was like, I was so hungover. I was like, right, I'm going to walk early Wait, towards the first, it. Day, first at work. day. You yeah. puked on your way to work. <laughs> on my first day. <laughs> oh my God. Which is a terrible choice. You actually. are an Do not agent drink of heavily chaos. the night before your first day. And you Nobody job. else needs that PSO. Because I was like, <laughs> <laughs> obviously. <laughs> just FYI. Just FYI. Just a just good bit of advice, guys. <laughs> we'll do a link to a more in depth <laughs> video underneath why you. Life hacks are like, if you want your clothes to be clean, you're going to have to wash those. You do. <laughs> <laughs> you do, you do, you must. Yeah. Mate, if you're going to have like a face-to-face -face interview, you should think about brushing your teeth. Yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> Light <up>. oh, <laughs> <laughs> Just Stop speaking. Um, <laughs> so, but I was like, oh, I'll leave early and I'll have a plain bread roll. Because like, you know when you can feel like the acid of alcohol in your body like sloshing around? No. Like you sort of feel like, you know those toys at museums where you hold on to them water snakes and they just like fall mm. through? That's what I was. If someone mm. tried to hug me, I'd be like, ooh. Oh, <laughs> so God. I was like, I'll put a bread roll in me. But as I was walking through the yogurt and dairy, you mean I was you'll like, eat a bread oh, roll? Oh, <laughs> 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 And then obviously like went straight to the cafe <laughs> and I sort of arrived and I was like, oh God. And my friend Alice, who does know the story, but she's the manager or she was the manager of it. And I was like, oh, I don't, I don't, I think I've got flu. I don't feel very well. I just don't feel very well. And I just kept mentioning it. And then like, because it's the first day, she was like, show me all the quiches. And she's like, and this is Emmental. And, and you this like, is Pecorino. Uh, uh, and there's like a cheese uh, counter. Uh, she's like, do you know how to use the big cheese slice uh, machine? And I was like, oh. <laughs> and then I exploded everywhere in the bathroom, luckily. Oh but it's one no. bathroom for staff and customers. And they sent me home and apparently they were all like, that poor girl, how embarrassing. Her first day, how how embarrassing yeah, and then I didn't I didn't admit it if I told like Francis who worked there this is like when I was like 21 and Francis was like never tell anyone you got away with it I got away well, no, when Alice when I told her like I think it was like a year later we were drunk and I was still working there and she was like I don't think that's funny and I was like yeah no yeah, I didn't yeah, 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 crazy <laughs> <laughs> And you were getting drunk again, and you're like, "Yeah, do you want to run the trial shift again tomorrow? And see how we get on. I'll redeem myself." Jesus. Did you go oh somewhere God. else to buy a bread roll? If I was going to a cafe, I'd wear, I'll just pick up a bread roll there. Me too. It's I wild that you went to I got one. It was like it was like six thirty a.m. Right. Same. Oh, so it was like okay. empty, right? Like. Okay, so they so what you're saying is when you left and they were like who puked, they were like, I guess it was that only girl who was here. <laughs> yeah. Here's the bread roll girl. I guess it was just the only customer we've had so roll. far. <laughs> Can we also just say like if you are feeling sick and you go to the supermarket, yogurt and dairy is not an aisle to walk down. Yeah. Because you think in. about curdling yeah. too oh, much. Make it stop. Andrew Okay, sorry. Andrew, Andrew, time for a listener problem. Tamsin, what kind of advice giver are you? Oh, bad why uh, <laughs> I don't know I just I don't know do I don't know why I'm siblings? bad I do have younger siblings they're not doing them. great <laughs> <laughs> how can they do great their big sister's just crying in a TK Maxx because she's having an existential crisis about tights 
Uh, I think none of the Kellys are thriving. <laughs> All right, Sorry, okay, no it's true. My, my youngest brother works um, part time in co op, but he acts like he's like CEO of co op. He's just like oh, never right. got any time to speak to us, and it's like, what what are you doing? I'm actually like, obsessed with that as a personality. Like, sorry, <laughs> I have got a shift in four hours, so I'm not going to be able to fit that in. My friend's <laughs> little sister just had a video interview for the local Lidl that where she lives, and she panicked at the end of it. But I just love Lidl. <laughs> and we were like you've definitely got it then you definitely got it and then she got a rejection through oh no I to go, oh, just love little we are like can we let the crazy little love work in little it doesn't seem right she's too little for it focused that's so sweet oh my god I love that's that so idea. nice he's like, I just I love little gotta take this call gotta <laughs> take this call he's like Connor why haven't you like, you haven't phoned mum for three months and he's like I'm busy <laughs> Is he doing what? Stacking the shelves. Actually, in all fairness, if someone's going in and puking everywhere and crying, it's a very stressful yeah, environment. Yeah, it sounds intense and like... I think co-op's more low-key, though. I reckon you get less pukers in a co-op. I would really? If it was a co-op, I would have puked in it. It wasn't a choice to do the Sainsbury's. I, okay, but yeah, I see what you mean. No, but, but you the, weren't in a co-op in that's the first true. place. That's, you I didn't pick the, the Sainsbury's. The Sainsbury's, Sainsbury's picked, picked you. Yeah, yeah I think co-op that's has lovely. more of like mm. a... No one goes to Sainsbury's just to buy their paper, but people do go to the co-op just to buy the paper. It has more of a like community, community vibe. Community vibe. Mm. Cooperative. Indeed. That's what I'd say, a cooperative it, vibe. Right, there you As go. It also, he's also got the funeral care team to manage. <laughs> He's got, and the blue, I heard that the blue fronted co-ops and the green fronted co-ops are actually run as two separate businesses. You said you heard that. He told you that, right? No. (laughs) I have to do my own research. He's too busy. (laughs) (laughs) He's too busy managing it all, yeah. I love Um, the idea that your entire life is just talking about retail with people. (laughs) Co-op conversations, TK Maxx conversations. There's a TK Maxx kid, there's a co-op kid. Do you have any other siblings? (laughs) Yes, my other brother works at Top's Tiles. (laughs) (laughs) So yeah, we've got we've basically wow. got the high street covered. You yeah. really do. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is amazing. Oh this God, is like incredible. succession, the Cornish <laughs> succession. <laughs> <laughs> They're just like low level employees rather than like the CEOs. I love it. Mm. I love it. Shout out to Tamsin Brothers. Okay, so you're not a great advice giver, but. Sorry, but I'll try my best. But you'll do your absolute best. You'll give it socks, and that's what matters. Go on, Andrew. Um, Well, we have several problems. Would you like uh, a boundaries problem, a breakup problem, uh, a sexual intimacy problem? One of those three we'll, we'll go for. Just Boundaries, Ooh. breakup, sexual intimacy. Oh, sexual intimacy. Okay, okay, <laughs> That's the one I wanted. The one with sex in it. Yes, please. Okay, this is... I can't come unless my dog's watching. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just guessing. But if I'm right, Oh, I'll we have done this problem before. Such a okay, wild um... guess. <laughs> I put a pillow in front of my dog. <laughs> Do you? In front of Sophie? Because I don't want her looking at me. Why don't you just put her out of the room? Okay, I'm going to get up. Sophie Ellis Barks does quite a lappy little she, If she'd be like... Outside Sophie Ellis Barkster, yeah. That's amazing. She, she'd be outside the door like, <laughs> men are on the dance floor. <laughs> she would, she'd want to come in, so okay. just let, leave her in, but pillow. She actually yeah. respects the pillow now. Let so. her hair. Wow. Let her hair. Yeah. 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 Well, just keep let her down. Hair. Let, <laughs> her hair. let her hair. Let her hair. Say let her hair. <laughs> let her hair. Yeah. <laughs> Gosh. Sorry, okay, Andrew. I, you that's sorry. All very <laughs> stressful. <laughs> Go on, Andrew. This is from Jay. Hi, Jay. Hi, Jay. Hi, Jay. Jay says, hello, lovely hogs. Long time listener, first time caller. Here's <gasps> oh, a... Oh, we've never had that. So exciting. It's very nice. And they're a loyal patron as well. Oh, my gosh. Thank oh, you, Jay. Jay. We can oh, figure out who bad. it is. Yeah, we can. That's so exciting. So here's a problem for you to... Point, well, oh, I mean, there's 850 to go through. So good luck working it's it out. Oh, my God. That's so yeah. cool. Thank you, patrons. That Samson. is very cool. Response. It's a lovely community. Thank um, you because of the, my crab addiction. I really appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Not all of your money will be going to crabs. I have to stress that, dear listener. Um, uh, I am a female. You have a new food addiction every time we talk. Okay, go on. <laughs> Sorry. I am a female in a same-sex relationship of five years. We okay. love it. How long are your nails? Huh? Doesn't matter either way. You can do it either well, way. Well, maybe that's five years yeah. and it's a sexual intimacy problem. I think their nails are not really being considered. Go mm. on. Okay. My partner and I love each other so much, but we don't have sex. Haven't for years. To put it simply, I don't think we click sexually. Oh right. When we first met, the sex was great, but after a few months, things got hard. Uh, which is obviously great in a straight relationship, but not. Um, <laughs> Your uh, click can get hard, Andre. Clicking. Oh Kiss yes, I, did. I have heard that. Yeah. Yeah. God. 
What do you mean candy? You have one. <laughs> I know. I just it got harder. I don't know. I mean, Take them off. <laughs> <laughs> it, it will have if it's it sure it will have, yeah. yeah. It's like a penis, yeah. like all the blood goes there. I'm probably just not thinking about that at the time. I suppose that's what it is. Yeah. Right. Well, even yeah. when you're just playing around with yourself as a teenager trying to figure out how it works. More worried about if the dog's watching. Yeah, fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> Sophie's an old dog. Go on. <laughs> Different sex drives and no communication um, is what uh, what Jay says. Yeah. Uh, I don't think she was feeling fulfilled, but all she would say when I tried to talk about it was that I would figure out how to please her. Needless to say, I didn't. Uh, throw into the mix of my anxiety, depression, and history of using sex as a form of self-harm. Mm-hmm. We are now five years in and have absolutely no sexual relationship. Mm-hmm. It's been years and I just don't know how to even begin to broach this subject. I personally don't need a wild and crazy sex life, but some intimacy would be nice. Yeah. Um, any solutions, problems, thoughts, I actually help? have the solution. Oh, okay, great. Helen and please. Yeah, you have all that experience from being in a relationship. I've never had a relationship, <laughs> as we know, but I have watched a lot of films. No. Okay, well then, hey, we're good to go. And they're always displaying lesbian couples who are having difficulty in sexual relationships. Mm. Okay, so not a lesbian couple, Meryl Streep and Tommy Lee Jones. Oh my but God. In this film, they haven't had sex in a long time. Name the film, Helen. Okay, Helm. it's complicated. Mm-hmm. Mm. Steve Carell plays a sex therapist, and I highly recommend it. Okay, go on. So what they do. Is it Tommy Lee Jones? Is it, is it not? In it's complicated? Is it not now? I don't think so. I thought it was Alec Baldwin. Okay, it's not Alec Baldwin. Oh, yeah. Maybe I'm thinking of the wrong film. I don't think it's called It's Complicated. Okay. And can we get some Meryl Street Street marriage problem film? I'd like advice from the made up film. Yeah. It's not a made up oh, film. Oh, sorry. Okay, I've just maybe got a little bit lost. And quite frankly, I think it's astonishing that Catherine is correcting me, seeing as any time she tries to name any actor, she turns into a 60 year old. Uh-huh. Going like, ah, uh, you know your man from the one. <laughs> what one? <laughs> Go on, Andrew. Hope Springs. Hope Springs, close Thank enough. It's in the you. same world, isn't it? Okay, go yeah. on. In the same. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Go on. So and basically, I'm just going to tell you what Steve Carell tells him. They've got to spend a lot of money to travel up to Massachusetts, and I don't think Steve, he doesn't do it full time. It's like he's, he's acting. He's, he's play, trying he's to pretending, break into it. He's pretending. No, I don't think oh. he is. I think he's doing the role for my. It's a whole thing. Oh. Okay. Anyway, and basically, <laughs> they. Don't be nasty, Catherine. They they don't even share a bed, this couple, okay? Now, oh, what they God. have to do is they have to do the first night five minutes holding each other, okay? okay. So you spend five minutes holding each other. Then the next night, you have to, like, say things that, like, turn you on about the other person. Mm. Then the next night, you need Tommy Lee Jones to book a restaurant and a hotel that's connected. And then you have to, like, nearly have sex. But, like, just basically one of you can't get hard or one of you decides to back out at the last minute. And then the next night, it just happens. Okay. Hello. Wow, Hello. <laughs> <laughs> just silence. Something yeah. to think about. And then, oh, and then at the end of the film... Um, they're just they're back in their house and you think oh no it's gone back to how it is before but um, he, he leaves to go to work and then he comes back in and grabs her and kisses her and slaps her on the ass you know Meryl Streep just loves her that's just the sort of gal she is in the film yeah okay and um, Jay uh, you're welcome well there's something there you know I actually do think there's something there I think the problem is that it presumes lesbian relationships don't already involve holding each other and telling each other what you care about in the other person or that we also don't make a huge effort for a romance but I, I think there's something there. There's something there. Okay, that I mean, like, felt that felt like there no, was actually, a message I, behind what you said, what, and I did not pick up on it. I think you're right. I think like you actually. My point is that I I think what I do agree with in that sentiment is that like it's not just going to happen. You do actually have to meaningfully change your patterns. Yes. And I also feel like all the clues are in the question, which is like the main thing that stuck out to me is you've said there's no communication. Like surely you have mm. to start talking about it. Yeah. What do you think, Tamsin? Well, I th- always think it's good to make a bold choice. If the, if you're stuck in a rut, it's good to make a bold choice. Yeah. So I'd be like, come on then. Let's, <laughs> and let's then. go. Get them off. <laughs> get the dog. Get the pillow. We're bloody going. <laughs> <laughs> that's your bold choice. Get them off. Well, I don't know. I just think I, 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 that's the attitude I'd go into yeah. my bold, yeah. bold choice with. Yeah. Like, let's go. Yeah. Um, and then I don't know. I'd just try and do something really out of the ordinary you've got to like do something that you wouldn't normally do like right? role play like costumes oh yeah or just maybe just get out get go somewhere else you know or like go somewhere romantic like uh, the, the hotel pretty horny like you know horny, yeah. you've got to build it you've got to build you've got to build it haven't you you can't just you've got to build it yeah. if you build it horny? they oh, the will come so <gasps> oh nice. nice my may i say i think that there is a point at which like I do think you need to talk about it. 
not I, I, I think so for me there's two times you shouldn't um talk about things in the heat of the moment I think when you've just tried to have sex you shouldn't mm. talk about how you're not having, able to have sex and when you've just ha- in your in a row I don't think you should talk about how you row I think you should talk about both when you're not trying to do either so when you're not in the middle of a row you should talk about how you communicate in rows I think that's when you're like better able to change those behaviours and in oh the same God. way that I think like when you're not in bed or like one of you hasn't just asked for sex I think that's when you should talk about um, wh- why you're not having sex but mainly I think that like a lot of the time the problem with conversations around not having sex is that like they're really tense mm. and I think like then the sex becomes tense mm. and all the stress around it becomes tense and it's just not sexy yeah. and I think like the thing you have to remember is what is fun about the start of a relationship is that is that like you don't know where the person has to be the next day you don't know what they've had going on that day you don't know how they feel about their mother this week you just what are trying that? to what does that my do point is like you butt? don't you're not worrying about all the things that are on their plate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're just there for a laugh and a good time and like a f- and like a fun connection. So I think the more fun you can make it. So like surprise them while they sleep. Or? <laughs> That's not remotely what I was saying. No. And also, you shouldn't be doing that at the start of a relationship either. That's d- just no, just hard no. Just I'd say no, on that yeah. one never for that. Oh, um, we're learning, aren't we? I was thinking yeah. more like, like what is a fun night out for you guys? Is like Bowling. have a giggle. I think a giggle's more likely to lead to sex than like a stressful chat. Yeah, you've got to relax. That's the big mm-hmm. thing is you've got mm. to relax, isn't it? And you're right. I think the conversations mm. around it are always too tense and they mm. don't lend themselves to mm. actually where you want to be in order to have sex. <gasps> right? Go also, through their um, internet search history <laughs> and find out what their kink is that they've no. never shared with no. you and then recreate Just that for them. Just invade their privacy no. and you're well on your way. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. See no. what they haven't deleted. No. So, like, have a look at their bank account. See no. what's going on in there. Get yeah. in their incognito mode if you can. <laughs> like, like surprise them when they're clearly mid-wank and then just like see it and then be like, that's what I'm doing then. You know? Can I also say... There's something in the message that's like, I don't even need it to be like a wild, fun sex life. I just some intimacy. It's like, I I think I may be like, it's speaking to me because I've been there. But yeah. like, when you're in a relationship for a long time where there isn't sexual intimacy, intimacy, I think you have to tell yourself a lot of things. If you're a person who's usually sexual and wants sex, you have to kind of do a lot of like, well, we have this trade-off and we have that trade-off. And look, obviously sexual relationships are going to change and morph and be sometimes more active and not in long-term relationships but I think it's okay to be like I would like sex and I and it's an important part of our relationship and if you want to work on it amazing let's work on it together as a team but if you don't want to work on it it's a legitimate thing for me to want from you and doesn't diminish my love for you but it's still like a thing that a person might need in a relationship and you're not definitely a grown-up chat about like sex drives and like what you'd like mm. but it doesn't have to start with sex like it can just be like a prolonged hug like on mm, the sofa just like an, yeah. it can just be the touching. lesbians are already doing that i assure but you. they might not be they are i promise you okay if you aren't then fewer just hugs do more fucking <laughs> yes because I, 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 I think i agree i do agree with that more yeah i think a lot of it's just psychological isn't it and if you can just get past that and actually do yeah. the thing you're just going to feel better after yeah but whipped cream can may i also ask, <laughs> ask if you're a- ask yourself honestly if you're doing the things for your partner that you did at the start of the relationship you gotta because, shake it up like because also yeah. like massage for example, oil candles yeah but did you used to bring them flowers did you used to feel did you used to feel better about yourself at the relation at the start of the relationship if so why that could be a multitude of reasons yeah. it could be that like I find I'm more likely to have sex when I'm having therapy because then my partner doesn't have to be all things and everything to me. Like, it might be that you feel better when you get dressed up (gasps) that day. It might be that you feel better when you've exercised. It doesn't matter what it is, but, Mm. like, if it it might be that you're having, if you're having dinner at 9 p.m., it's unlikely you're going to be fucking at 9.30. Rent the local leisure center and enjoy the pool. (laughs) All good ideas. We're just, we're just, you know what, we're just chucking shit at the wall and we're just going to see what's there. Yeah, Chuck shit like in the wall and see what sticks. <laughs> Probably a shit oh, on the Jesus. walls at my le- yeah. leisure centre. <laughs> yeah, that's a no from me. I, I just got one, <laughs> I know. one thing though. Should we just like, as an option, create like a little soundscape between the three of us that you could put on that would get you and your partner in the mood? No. Like a... <laughs> <laughs> Mine would be like a Why sound of a packet like of crisps babies? opening. I think that would. Nice. <gasps> yeah, yeah. Very sexy. Okay. Very sexy. But also, oh my God, there's also uh, like babies. 
I hate that you I hear baby there. It. I was trying to do like a like uh, on the on the it. like um clip like sound like. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my gosh, Hamza, you've been such a wonderful guest. Thank you so much. Oh, it's it's so this has been great. I thought your you advice was very good as well. Did you? Yeah. I thought so well, too. My brother should be doing better in life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like it's really savage me. They're savage. just they just suck, and that's not my fault. So they're they're messaging I being like, listen, let me tell you, they hundred percent are. And another thing, um, in case you're wondering, because I was, and I'll bet you are, um, the chain that Tamsin's neck um glasses are on is from Tiger. It's yeah. from Tiger Three and pants. it's phenomenal. It's I went phenomenal. into Tiger the other day and got um, ice uh, lolly maker freezers myself. All right, well, why aren't you sponsoring the podcast? That's um, my question. Just in case you're not in the local TK Maxx that Tamsin is at and you don't just see her crying in the aisles and you can meet her that way, <laughs> where can you go see Tamsin live? Um, well, my show will be on in Edinburgh. Love it. Woo. Pleasance Courtyard, Bunker 1, 8.40. A gorgeous room. We've, Me, both, we've both done, done it. Yeah. We've both yeah. done yeah. Bunker yeah. 1. Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel it's so warm. Gorgeous, yeah, it's such a gorgeous space. <laughs> the night like, I went to see Catherine's show there, this is like before I was doing an hour. So 2018 this was, and it was like, I went to go see Catherine's show. I was doing a different thing. And the ceiling caved in on you. Do you remember? I do remember. But thankfully, my show was about um, being disrespectful to God. So we had fun. With it. <laughs> we had a lot so of fun. fun. With it. I just done a joke it. about abortion. So it was fine. Wow. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, it was Brilliant. incredible the timing. Best time there. And what about online? Where can people follow you? Yes, I'm on my Instagram's Tamsin Kelly. And I do post lots of stories, but that's all I really post. All my stories are a bit mad, aren't they? Stories are funny. They are stories of life. Great. You know? Funny. Great. Can't wait to watch them. Cannot well, wait ta- to watch them. Tamsin and everything. Go see Tamsin live. Thank you, Tamsin Kelly. This has been your funeral. Be kind to the men who work at co-op. <laughs> Cheers. Be kind to men who work at co-op, please. Cheers. Not the women, They're though. busy. They're busy. <laughs> <laughs> Very busy, yeah. Thank you so much to our executive producers, Guy Goodman, Simon Moores, Mary Fox, Annie Tonner, Sarah Hartay deacon Oliver Jago, and Stuart Kerr. We're so grateful to you. You truly, genuinely are keeping us going. Feeling dunk. Also, thank you, massive thank you to our producers, Richard Bicknell, L, Richard Bolt, Neil Redmond, Victoria Hutchison, Emma Walton, Harold Van Dyke, Tim and Dom, David Walker, Rachel R, Anthony Conway, Sadie Cashmore, Claire Owen Jones, Jess and Nick, Zoe, Sarah and Molly, Raya Fink, Cordelia, Rachel Page, Helen A, Tina Lindsay, Graham Marsh, Amy O'Reardon, Abby Wharf, Key Web, Key Web. I knew that was Key. Key Web, Matt Sims, Luke Bright, Leah, Kate Spencer, Mae Williams, Tristan, Liz Forge, Taz, Chloe, Becky Fox, Amy and Emily Gee. We're so grateful you to you, You guys truly. keep the pigsty muddy. Yeah, we honestly, genuinely, with this new office, we're so grateful for your continued support. Thank you so much.